Yes, you read that right. I'm going to explore other page builders than Elementor in 2025 for the first time. And don't get it twisted, I'm not planning to leave Elementor or even WordPress, but I'm gonna go for some swims next year. If you remember my analogy I made about the cruise ship, I see WordPress and Elementor like a big cruise ship. I'm gonna go for some swims to some other ships next year, but I'm not leaving the big ship. And I came to this conclusion after reflecting back on 2024, because that's what we do in December, right? And making the plans for next year. And I personally really like to watch videos from other YouTubers that share what they've learned and talk about their plans. So that's what this video is. We're going to reflect back, look at the future, and I will tell you why I'm going to look for other page builders in 2025. As a solopreneur, having systems is even more essential than what I thought. I mean, we all understand that big businesses, they need a lot of systems to run, basically. And sometimes it feels like when you just have a small creative business, you can just do a little bit of work here and a little bit of work there, and it will be fine because you don't have that many people who rely on you. But what's also the case is that you have a lot of hats on as a small creative business because you have to do marketing sales design development finance you have to do everything and this is why i always make a big point out of using systems here on the living with pixels website it says it we're trying to build smart systems to work in because that's working in the smart way but i don't always follow my own advice <laughs> last year i told you guys that i was starting a new web design agency again right i made this video and i made this video and then after that there was nothing but the funny thing is i did actually do something i already accepted two client projects before i actually had the website the proposal that I wanted to focus, I wanted to go too fast. And of course, that didn't really work out because there was one client project. Uh, I will show you a blurred version of it because this one uh, failed. In the beginning, it was fine, but I found the client was a little bit too controlling. And so my conclusion was I didn't filter clients good enough. In the end, when I canceled the project, the client even agreed that maybe our expectations were not the same. And another project, which I'm still working on, uh, was a little bit too technical. It was really hard. I will show you more about this project soon, but it was really technical with uh, Crocoblog Jet Engine, and I really uh, reached the limit of my skills, basically. Uh, I also reached the limit of, of Crocoblog. <laughs> that was pretty cool. But for my taste, this project was just too technical. And so I came to the conclusion, my client filtering system is not good enough. I didn't really have a portfolio online that would signal to other people like hey these are the kind of projects that I do because I didn't prepare good enough and so I didn't attract the clients that I really wanted so right now I just have this uh, simple website uh, it's nothing it's just one page uh, so I just told myself okay no new client projects anymore only maybe a website here and there for a friend but I'm first going to make sure my portfolio looks great next year and then I can attract the right clients my next point is about materialistic lifestyle. I have become a lot less materialistic and I'm very proud of that. That was not a goal of mine, but it happened uh, while I was traveling. So if you didn't know, since 2023, I've been traveling the world. I have basically been a digital nomad, as they say, traveling around with my laptop, making friends. It has been a lot of fun. But what also happens when you travel is that you're constantly moving from house to house. And so in one house, you have a nice bathroom and you're like, oh, that's cool. And then in the next house, you, the bathroom is horrible and the kitchen is nice. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, now the kitchen nice. And then you have to move again. And so you can't really connect to the stuff that you like. And so it kind of forced me to just let go of a lot of stuff. And then when I came back to Europe, I realized like, hey, why did I care so much about all of this stuff that I had? And it just made me think about our society, well, especially the Western society, where we have so much stuff, but are we really happy with it? Here I found this article, are Americans too materialistic? I think it's not just the Americans. I think also European people, I'm a, I'm a European dude. They are very materialistic and they're proud of their stuff. But when you have to live with less, 
you cannot really focus on your stuff. You have to focus on the outside world and make yourself happy with that. I don't know if it makes sense what I'm saying, but I just wanted to share that with you. Traveling is not always comfortable, but it has positively uh, changed me. And this, what I'm talking about, is actually a concept in Buddhism, uh, which is detachment. In Buddhism, they say that you shouldn't be attached to too much of your stuff because that actually creates unhappiness. But in the West, it's like, oh, the more you gather, the more stuff you have, the happier you are, which is not really true. So yeah, I just wanted to share that beautiful insight because of traveling. Uh, the next thing I'm really proud of is that I have become less accepting of other people's shit. <laughs> this is quite a personal one, but I think I'm starting to love myself a little bit more. Uh, I used to be a lot more people pleasing and, and trying to prove my worth to, to everyone. But now I've learned to internalize my goals with the help of a therapist. I have to be honest. I didn't do it myself. I use this company. It's good. It's not great. I know there's people that have bad experience with this company. I'm not paid to say this. I just wanted to show that because I think this is a topic that people should talk about. It's okay to talk about uh, therapy. It should be okay because your mental health is very important. But if you can do offline therapy, then I would recommend that. But this is just nice. It's online. You can do it anywhere. It's great. Then I have become more aware of my perfectionism. Uh, this is a beautiful graphic that I found online. This is a little bit how I feel all of the time. There's so many things going on, so many projects. You're procrastinating, you're overwhelmed. It's just a lot. But this year I have started to see where my perfectionism showed up and that makes it able for me to tackle it better. So all of these things over here you see are different projects and I'm very good at starting a project but not so good at finishing it. Because at some point in the process, I tell myself like, okay, I don't have enough information to finish it or it's not good enough. And then I just put it aside and this creates a situation where I just have so many projects which I haven't finished. You, ha you have no idea how many videos I've started but never finished. It is insane. But before this year, I always give myself credit because I, I thought I am just strategic and therefore I have to judge really hard what video is worth it or not. And while there is some truth to it, it can also become problematic when your life starts to feel like this. So yes, I do still like to focus more on quality than quantity with my videos, but I have found some ways to tackle my perfectionism for the next year, which I will share with you in the next section of this video. Video 2025. So here's the first thing I'm gonna do in 2025. Beat my perfectionism. <laughs> I know it's a process, it's not a black and white thing, but here is the plan. I have realized that I spent a lot of time writing the script because script writing for me, it's the perfect safe place to be perfectionistic because I can keep preparing until it's perfect but that also keeps me stuck so in the next year I'm gonna try to make videos without a script not that all of my videos were scripted but almost all of them and then next year I want to flip that around 180 so that only a few videos are script but most of them are not maybe just some bullet points that are right down but the rest is just gonna be improvisation this for me is quite scary because I have to let go of, of that control but I am just not happy with the amount of videos I produced last year uh, it was only 16 so yeah a little bit more than one per month uh, to be fair, I also did create 26 videos for my uh, Figma design course and I updated some videos for my Elementor Pro course. So it's probably closer to one video a week, but still, I am not happy. And I know that script writing is holding me back and there's so much to talk about in our industry. I want to talk more, I want to share more, so I'm going to write less scripts. This maybe will mean that the quality of the videos will go a little bit down, that's what I'm scared of, but it will make it a lot easier for me to make videos and therefore there will be more videos, which is also a good thing, right? Because now it's just, it's just not enough, in my opinion. And I don't really have a specific goal in mind. I don't like to set very specific goals anymore because that also gives me anxiety and disappointment. Um, but I do wanna change and improve, of course. And the second thing I'm going to do more in 2025 is make more videos I am passionate and excited about. So when I started YouTube, I also wanted to prove myself that I could do it. And so I made a lot of videos for the audience and it worked really well, right? My channel started growing really fast. And so then I just told myself like what I want to make, that's not as important. 
because this this shit works basically and and don't get me wrong i am still passionate about what i make but many of the subjects before were based on what my audience wants and not what i want but i think the beauty of youtube is that you follow a person you follow a journey and the passion is what makes it so beautiful and it's not the case that i'm never going to make videos for the audience but i'm going to look at all the ideas that i have right now and if i don't like the idea then i will try to transform it in a way where it's exciting for me and if I cannot make that work, then I will just put that video in the fridge, uh, maybe for later. But yeah, I want to have more passion. When I was deep into my burnout, I felt my passion slowly like slipping away. Uh, I don't want to have that feeling ever again because I, I, I love to do this and I want to keep loving it. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to be fun in the long term. I'm, I'm still young, so I have a lot of years, right? <laughs> So yeah, this is also a way for me to tackle the last part of my burnout as I see it. I've been struggling for quite some time now. I am a lot better now and doing more things that I love will, will make it even better. And one of the things I really want to do is live streams, which is the next subject. So, so right now I don't really have live streams. I only have videos and shorts, which is nice, but I really love live streams, just building something together, just interacting a little bit more with you guys. Uh, I have already been preparing with some software. So in the live streams, I want to test uh, tools with you because I don't always have the time to test all the tools that I want. So it was like, oh, a live stream is perfect for that. Uh, I might prepare some uh, videos live with you. So it's kind of like a working together uh, kind of thing. I can just do like a challenge, like build something that I want to build or design something. It's going to be cool. And it's one of the things I am really excited about for next year. And then explore more platforms. Yeah, like I said, I want to use the live streams to explore other platforms. But I also want to make some YouTube videos about it. There's so many cool things happening in, in our space. And since the WordPress drama, uh, a lot of people have been questioning whether they still want to use WordPress. Uh, I love WordPress, but it is a bit messy. It is quite hard to understand everything right uh, and so i want to see if i can use some other platforms maybe for simpler websites so i'm interested in a few things uh, framer is something i'm interested in wix studio especially their ai and this is not the same as wix by the way this is the agency version the studio version so i want to test this one uh webflow uh, web studio bricks and breakdance, those are the ones on my list. Uh, maybe I'll also wanna mess around a little bit with Gutenberg to see if I like it, if I can make it work, I don't know. And I have to say though, Elementor has been improving last year. They, uh, the speed is a lot better now. There are some cool features in here, but there are many of these small things in the platform that I find a bit annoying and I use it, I am used to it. So it will take a lot of convincing for me to completely switch, but I'm just gonna educate myself a little bit more next year. So I hope that you guys are excited for that too. The next thing is building a great community. Yeah, so, so far uh, what I'm doing is I'm making videos on YouTube and then there's the comment section, right? And then you have uh, platforms like uh, Instagram where sometimes people send me a message. Uh, I have the Facebook group. I have a Discord server. I have a platform where I ha have my courses on and it's, it's all different places, but there are some platforms now like Circle and uh, School as well like school with a K, this one, uh, where you can combine that. So you can combine your courses with your community. And this has become really popular uh, for a good reason. So I'm going to take community a lot more serious next year. Uh, but I also want to put in some limitations because the courses are doing quite well. There are many people, but I cannot support everyone. And so there will be different levels of community and support. Uh, I will share more about this later, but I'm excited about this. And so this will roll out in 2025 as well. So those are all the things I want to do in 2025. But making goals can create anxiety as well because it only focuses on what you don't have right and i think we should also be thankful so in this little part i want to give myself some credits for what i did good in 2024 because i should be a little bit more proud of myself i i find that very hard to be proud of myself so i'm just going to share some things i'm proud of that i did in 2024. I replaced my whole camera setup with something super simple for travel. So before this, I used to use a big Canon camera, something like this. 
And then I had these key lights from Elgato on a, on a stand that you should clamp on your desk. And then I had a microphone arm like this with a big microphone on it. And I was all carrying that while I was traveling. And now I've minimized it to an iPhone setup. Like what you're watching right now is from the iPhone camera. I just have some little lights. Here, look at this. This is a light that I'm using to put some light on my face. So I have a few of these small lights, which are just battery power powered and USB-C. And then this microphone is just a USB-C microphone, which I can plug directly into my MacBook. And I've also minimized uh, my editing setup. Before this, I was in Adobe. But now to edit my videos, I'm using Descript. So with this tool, I can just record it straight onto my computer and then I can edit the video based on text. It's directly in the cloud, so I don't have to mess around with SD cards and storage. It's great. I love it. I also, last year, learned a lot about Jet Engine from Crocoblock because of that difficult client project. And I'm just, I'm just proud of that. So I can make more videos about Crocoblock this year. It is such a powerful tool. I also learned a lot more about hosting. So not just about hosting her, but about hosting. And I'm also proud of this because it was so confusing to me before. I'm also proud of this video that I made uh, about the WordPress drama. I spent weeks on that video and I think it turned out great. I'm also proud of my investments. Yes, I am into crypto, if you didn't know. I love crypto and I bought uh, Bitcoin at quite a good price. So I am up, even though this week it's a little bit down. <laughs> I am just proud that I was able to put some money in there and that I allowed myself to has, have some risk instead of also being uh, perfectionistic and controlling about this. And of course, my YouTube channel, I grew 33,000 subscribers. So early this year, we hit the 200,000 subscribers, which is also a nice number. And lastly, I am proud of the responses that I'm getting from my courses. So right now I have the these two courses. The Figma design course is still in uh, development, but the responses have been so great and I put so much time in this. It's going slower than I want, but I'm just proud. These are two products that in my eyes are really good and really solid. If you have not made any plans for 2025 yet, then I highly recommend to do that, but also write down what you're proud of from 2024 because I can tell you from my experience that in the past like a few years ago I only focused on what I didn't have and I wasn't really proud of myself of what I already did in the past so writing down what you're proud of uh, can make you feel good about yourself and if you do that often enough then the anxiety about what you don't have will become less so yeah that's all I wanted to say. I thought this was interesting. I hope you liked it too. And let's make 2025 an amazing year.